Over the next couple of days, we have gathered together some of the leading thinkers, not just in Myanmar, although we have many of those, but from many parts of the world. The workshop itself is very relevant at the moment in terms of whatever programming you design and actually implementing that design, you need to think politically and critically. Most of the development challenges that we face have got barriers which are there as a result of institutional arrangements, politics and the way in which the elites control resource. In order to be successful in achieving long-term sustainable change, we need to be able to engage with that environment in a, in a political way. For those of us who are gathering today, you sense an enormous amount of interest from international donors, from implementers, from INGOs, but also from many and local NGOs at the table. Ultimately, the goal is to make effective institutional change, and I think everyone is pretty much unified by that goal. The fundamental challenge for Myanmar is that you're shifting from a very donor-constrained environment to an environment where donors are very keen to be here, there's a lot of political uh, interest in Myanmar in donor capitals, and the, the size of the donor assistance envelope has, has massively increased. The country, if you look at historically, had never been united as one. We need to consider we have 135 ethnics and identify this uh, uh, 135 ethnic needs is quite important. The link between peacemaking and peace building require quite flexibility in the support and it is highly political but we have challenges in the institutional procedure, institutional policy. Myanmar government, socially government, borrowed money from ADB and World Bank and they spent more than 20 million or 30 million of dollars to plant the tree. It's a massive tree planting program. Of course, the people participation, people in decision making process is very minimal so that all the forests they planted are gone. Myanmar's challenge is about replacing exclusive institutions with inclusive ones politically, economically, and socially. All donors are different. Some of them are open to creative design and have inbuilt in them a degree of flexibility. Others are extremely rigid and do not want to engage in conversations about uh, tweaking the design of programs. We have a legal aid law which provides the foundation of legal aid across the country uh, where government will be responsible for the provision of legal aid. There are four core actors, there are others as well, but if we think about the lawyers around the country, they have been able to demonstrate what is possible, they've been engaging in these processes. We also had parliament. Parliament again, they were the ones that produced the bill, the bill committee produced a bill on legal aid. They had to have the, the the political capital to engage in this and it had to be a priority for them. And thirdly, the government, other elements of government had to endorse this process. They had to feel there was enough in it for them or enough reasons, enough incentives to be part of the process. And finally, civil society. There were enough actors within civil society, a broad enough consultation process for people to feel, yes, this is something we want to support and engage in. These kinds of results can only be achieved if they are owned and driven by local actors. One of the significant uh, achievement of civil society engagement in that law is uh, uh, civil society was able to manage the changes from mandatory registration to voluntary registration and 
it was to remove the all the punishment session in the draft law. And we civil society analyzed the uh, the incentive and also the the positioning of the different editor. It is equally important to have the constructive dialogue with the parliamentarian and the government and and by to understand their concern and to respect their concern and to answer their question by evidence, which is also reflect their interest as well. Elements of the programs which are dealing with a humanitarian, life-saving assistance approach, ready to be able to respond to crises on the ground. An element of the program will be dealing with kind of standard orthodox development approaches which are delivering tangible, good quality results. And then a proportion of the portfolio which is then going to be dealing with these much more complicated change management, politically motivated approaches. And if you then see that portfolio as if you take that portfolio as a whole, it's not necessary to strip out any one element of it. If the budgets change, then they all change proportionately rather than elements being pulled out because working politically programs have traditionally been quite vulnerable to, uh, to overall changes within the portfolio size. So that portfolio approach also then allows you to understand the balance between different elements of the, of the program and to drive synergy between approaches which are taking a traditional and orthodox approach and approaches which are taking a working politically approach. There are only two large standing armies to push reform forever. That's the government and the market, right? It'll never be NGOs and it will never be donors. Right, so the, from day one, you're trying to figure out how am I going to insert this in the everyday practice of the government? Because they're going to show up and they're going to try and do something. This is the outcome of the actual law, right? So you've got this problem and then you've got a, basically it's a two-page law, made a administrative procedure as opposed to judicial, it took it out of the courts, pushed approval down to the provincial level. So you got this kind of 1,500% increase in performance with the same bureaucracy and basically the same budget. I was very much in favor of, you know, good relation, healthier relationship between government agencies, civil society people to improve the livelihood people are suffering right now. Programs which are designed from the top down, which only have the result in mind, turn out in the long run to be much less successful in achieving development outcomes, which require a lot of participation, a lot of understanding of the local context, if they're going to be sustainable over the long term. At the end of the day, it's not just only about certain development outcomes required by certain donor or certain actors. It's about the inspiration of the society, how they really want to drive change. I really want to emphasize that thinking and working politically is not just about adaptive, flexible programming. What you're doing is designing, implementing, monitoring, and learning all at the same time. There is never going to be any alternative for both donors and implementers to sustained critical analysis and thinking. Don't think why you can't. Think where you need to and why you must. <laughs>